You're listening to Ecstasy Radio. Your number one free rock and metal radio show. Powered by Ecstasy Media Productions. Let's get this rock a rolling. Let's get this rock a rolling. Let's get this rock. Now for your host, DJ Doc. Hey, I'm Doc, and I'm the host of Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show guys thank you so much for tuning in thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you i really do appreciate it and please do subscribe it really does help us out quite a bit so guys this show was supposed to have aired last week but we had some technical difficulties and we had some power outages that prevented us from airing the episode so thank you so much for your uh support and thank you so much for your understanding we uh we did the best we could and we could have aired the episode if I'd cut corners, but here at Ecstasy Radio, um, we don't cut corners. So that would lead to a drop in quality, and uh, we are all about quality here. So uh, thank you so much for your support, and thank you so much for your patience, and we're sorry for any inconveniences. I know you guys love this show. So that said, I'm going to be joined later on in the show by The Kingdom, and they're an awesome metal band out of Idaho. Uh, so let's get the rock and rolling here, guys. Let's get it going. Uh, I've got uh, the newest single from Tyrant's Downfall, their song "Ex Girlfriend." Enjoy. We got to actually debut this last week. We did a live, um, a live DJ session for three and a half hours, so that was pretty cool. And we got to actually de- uh, debut this single. So enjoy. This is "Ex Girlfriend." Tyrant's Downfall. I'm your host, DJ Doc, here on Ecstasy Radio. I'll see you guys back here in a bit. Don't understand what's not me here 
the things that you heard about me I don't give a damn what can make me bleed You're a liar, a cheater, you're alone and I'm free Every new way from you I feel the same Shades of Raven with Polarity. Before that, there was Blacklist Union with Dirty Halo. What I've got up next for you is Cold Words with Bad News. I'll see you guys back here in a bit. You are listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. Oh 
Hey, I'm Doc here on Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. And today, guys, I am joined by the Kingdom. Guys, how are you? Welcome to the show. Fantastic. I'm doing good. Awesome. Thanks for having us. No problem. No problem. So go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys, to the audience. I'm Mikey. I am the vocalist for the Kingdom. I'm Logan. I'm the drummer for the Kingdom. I'm Nick. I'm one of the guitarists for the Kingdom. I'm Casey. I'm the bass player and sometimes backup vocalist for the Kingdom. And I'm Colton. One of the guitarists for the kingdom. Awesome, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. By the way, Logan, you just gave away your identity. Uh, I know that you're called the mask on stage. So you woke up and feel this violence. There you go. <laughs> Let me but, really quickly just change my name to backwards. <laughs> 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 It's good to have you guys on the show. I want to ask you guys about your formation. Where did you guys form? It's either you or I are going to answer that one, Logan. We started, well, probably about a year ago in Pokey. We had a uh, year and a half. We had another member, and he has since passed on, but he had a dream about starting a band here, and this ragtag bunch of hooligans is what cemented what his dream was, and and uh he he handpicked all of us he saw the talent in all of us and so he's always with us and that's kind of how we formed very nice very nice and uh what <clears throat> what made you guys choose the name the kingdom it sort of happened as these things kind of do yeah. that's because we're because we're all saying like all right let's go crush this show let's go conquer this uh, stage and everything and then it's just kind of evolved from there there was a couple other names that were thrown into the mix of possibilities and this one just happened to be the most fitting yeah okay <laughs> okay and uh <clears throat> i understand that you guys have a new ep out uh what is the name of that ep it is the kingdom of the damned okay and uh what's the uh what's the concept behind it it was like um uh when um so the uh band member that passed on unfortunately was a newbie like Logan said, he still lives, but his concept behind that song was to kind of have like, um, you know how there's that uh, kind of like that shout and like um, cadence that ancient soldiers would have like a whoop, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. So was, he had that kind of idea going in mind and then Logan put a tribal beat to it and then that's the concept. It's like a army going to war or something like that. And then it's, and then we're like, what makes this more metal if they're all like damned to damned to do this for eternity? And we're like, oh shit, that's actually really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Like kind of like the Imperial March kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Very nice. And uh on this EP you've got a song called Psycho Succubus, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, what's the uh what's the background behind that song? So funny story. Um the the one that the member that we keep referencing the one that recently passed on he wrote it about a girl that he was with at the time mm -hmm. and she basically just she was no good and basically bled him dry and drove him nuts and mm -hmm. so he just wrote a song about it and we're like hey let's just stick with this right that's interesting funny, though every time we played it with him he could never get the vocals down and it drove him so mad yeah but then when you were trying to, it drove you mad and you yeah. got in the studio and you said, all right, this, I'm going to just do this. This is how we're going to do it. And you just, what came out was what you got on the EP. And that's how it's been since. I went full, like, Phil Bozeman meets, like, Death Clock on it. It just <laughs> played out perfectly. <laughs> it was rad. That's pretty you cool. did it in one take, I think you did. I did. <laughs> that's awesome, guys. Chuck a bunch of water and get it done. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome and uh it's interesting that um i've got you on this show uh being that this show is going to be the radio if i haven't played it already um which i probably will um <clears throat> it's going to be the radio debut of a song called ex-girlfriend by uh tyrant's downfall so it's interesting <laughs> that i've got you guys on here talking about psycho succubus which is pretty much about the same thing so <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. 
So here it is, guys. This is Psycho Succubus by the Kingdom. I am joined by the Kingdom themselves today. We'll see you guys back here in a bit. You are listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show.
you crying with old friend before that that was kill hall with fear shaped man what i've got up next for you is necrometer with their song this god's mask i'll see you guys back here in a bit you are listening to ecstasy radio your number one free rock and metal radio show
Hey, I'm Doc here on Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. Guys, today I am joined by the Kingdom. So guys, how would you typically describe the music you create? Um, I'm very much an, like an old school style metal guy. So my favorite bands are like Iron Maiden, King Diamond, and Death. And so I just like to create a more like aggressive version of that when I'm writing. Okay. I'm sure other guys have different influences. And then, then when you like tie in a few other people, like all of us have very different bands, like inspirational, like uh, you heard Colton mention Iron Maiden, Death. Um, some of mine would include like Lamb of God, maybe some Hatebreed, and actually Slayer. So there's there's a little bit of there's a little bit of similarities there for as far as that, and I'm sure the others could say the same. Very nice, very nice. And uh, I'm guessing those are also your influences. But uh, who inspired you to create the music that you're creating in the first place? Hmm. Well, well, either Nick or Casey answer this one because. You know, we'll, we'll let Nick chime in. He hasn't chimed in yet. <laughs> There's a lot of different influences, of course. I like a lot of classic rock, too, and a lot of the metal bands like these guys have mentioned. I mean, all of them are just very influential. Mm-hmm. Very for, nice. for me, uh, at least for um, like writing, I like uh, I turn to a lot of jazz uh, compositions, specifically the chords that they use, right. and just take the evilest sounding ones and just I make think- them even more evil. I think what really inspired me to want to play is that my dad was actually, um, he used to be in a band back in the day. And so he'd always be fiddling around on his guitar. He was in an old country band. Mm -hmm. And so I would always be listening to him and I took a liking to it and just decided one day to pick up a guitar. They actually got me my first Fender for Christmas back when I was like 18 and just been fiddling, whittling with it since. So I could basically just say that my dad's probably been my biggest influence far as playing music and now we have um our fallen comrade he i can i'm sure i could speak for all of us here when he encourages us to keep wanting to play and play what we play and just follow our passion so we could honestly throw a new bo in there as well very nice very nice and his and his influences were like not what you would expect from a metal dude Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, like, he's kind of all over the place. He was kind of all over the place. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, my dad was much the same. Um, <clears throat> he passed away in March, but uh, mm. uh, he was very much a country, southern rock kind of musician. And uh, but he loved everything. I mean, growing up, he didn't like some of the music that I was listening to, like rock and metal. But then I took him to an Ozzy Osbourne and Rob Zombie show. And that quickly changed his mind. <laughs> that's, 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 that's how you do it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And uh, he was a rock and metal fan up until the end. So, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from there. Yeah, he was a big influence on me as well. So uh, have you guys opened live for anybody? I, I, know that uh, you, I know that you guys are right now, you're wanting people to vote for you when it comes to the open act, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, that takes you to like uh, New York, I think I read, and you get like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, there's like ten thousand um, dollars. We get to open for who did I hear? Like was it Kelly Clarkson? Kelly Clarkson, Marine Five, and One Republic are the headliners. Yeah. The three headliners they've announced so far. And as far as who we've opened for before, we've we've done a lot of work with local bands in the area, and we've opened up for bands like uh, Dead Reckoning, who just did a massive like three lake tour across the U S and that was, that was probably personally, that was probably one of my favorite ones to open for. They were freaking awesome. They were, they they, they were dope. (laughs) Amazing energy. We also opened for great witch and they just, yeah. Well, like a month or two ago, they got off tour as well. I think they only did the Western half of the U S but still they're red too. So, I mean, I don't know if you or anyone else who's listening to the radio show has ever heard of them, but uh, Blistered Earth, I've opened for them, not in this band, but in a previous band that I was a part of. Those know. guys were awesome. That's the, like, uh, Metallica. Yeah, that's how yeah. Kelly band, yeah. Yeah. I was getting ready to ask who your favorites I, were. Yeah. Um, I think my personal favorite is Dead Reckoning. Same. Same. 
That's incredible because I've, I've heard of them. I've heard of them. And yeah, your your style of music definitely fits theirs as well. I don't see you like <clears throat> I would. That would be awesome if you guys were to win and do it. But um, being that you guys are like a hard rock metal band, um, that would be really interesting to see you open up for something that's completely out of your genre, like Kelly Clarkson or Maroon Five. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would... we. We've we've done we, I've seen shows before that you know, two multiple bands from different genres like it was just last I went and seen Cypress Hill open up for Slipknot and that was just you know it, it blended so well for rappers versus metalheads it was I, mm -hmm. I think we could do this <laughs> that yeah. same year Jelly Roll opened up for Shine Down which was really weird because like country and then hard <laughs> rock and, and yet it worked just so well. When I was 19, I saw that one guy, which is just a one-man band with a pipe that he turned into an instrument, open for a head of all people. <laughs> That's so cool, guys. I hope you guys win, definitely. We've been voting for you, so we I hope you win. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. It's huge. Thank you so much. No problem. You can't no. see, but I threw the horns, double horns. <laughs> right. And if, uh, you, if anybody is out there listening, uh, do definitely go and vote for them. Uh, I would love to see, um, I would love to see a metal band open for uh, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, we gotta do it to think. <laughs> that would be so cool. So, if you guys could perform with anybody, who would you want to perform with, and why? Well, I I'm gonna speak for us, and I'm gonna okay. Say, <laughs> Gojira. That's like the be all end all. The vocalist loves it. The guitarists love it. The drumming that Mario lays down is it's like the perfect blend of Jason Bittner and Neil Peart. He's got the prog aspect, the thrashy groove aspect, and just the music that those guys put out. That's I would say Gojira pretty comfortably for all of us. They're pretty thick. Yeah, sounds. I'll second that. <laughs> Gojira nice. would be really cool. And then, of course, you know, it would be awesome if, like, the big name ones that, you know, we've all heard since, like, we were kids. We'd be like, hey, come on. <laughs> I'm a new metal guy, so I would love to, like, personally open for another side, like, Gojira, but I think it'd be cool to open for, like, Corn or maybe, like, Limp Biscuit or something. Just, you know, something that I grew up with, definitely. That would be way rad, for sure. And if you guys can meet any musician, alive or dead, who would it be and why? I know this one for me, it's Marty Friedman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's because he's my favorite guitar player. Mm -hmm. I would say Jimi Hendrix, just because the man was an animal. Yes, he was. Very much so. What about you, Nikki? Uh, I don't know, both of those are good ones. Maybe Marty Friedman, he's a hero of mine for sure, too. Mm -hmm. Dude, Lemmy, for sure. He's the reason that I do all the strumming in like, my playing. I mean, Lemmy, for sure. Although I'd probably get my ass kicked by him a lot of times. <laughs> what about you, Logan? Yeah, Logan. Alex Van Halen. Yo, there we go. That's a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Guys, unfortunately, <clears throat> and I say this every show, it's not unfortunate that I have the music to play, but I do love uh, love take, talking to my voice. Uh, getting tongue-tied. I do love talking to my artists that I have on the show. Uh, but I do have to introduce the next song. The next song is Australia with the Mori Bund. We'll see you guys back here in a bit. You are listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. <laughs>
that was Ryogen with Home. Before that, that was Piper with Dream. What I've got up next for you is Avalanche with Little Lotus. I'll see you guys back here in a bit. You are listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. I'm Doc here on Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. Guys, today I am joined by the Kingdom. So guys, what influence do you think the fans have on your creative process or your live performances? You need to go. I mean, certainly a lot of things to be able to do it without the fans. It's all about having people be able to let us do what we love doing. So I think it's also about the openness and acceptance. Like if people come to see our live shows and they see what we're doing and they are like, you know what, we'll come back for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a big thing that is definitely helping us move forward, too. Mm-hmm. And like Nick said, it's uh, about the acceptance of people like helping us move forward because we can't do this without them. Yeah. It's not so much just the live shows. It's even people just perusing on streaming platforms like Spotify and all that that come across our music. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we're reaching people, whether we're selling them CDs, we're reaching out to them via streaming services. They come, they buy a ticket, come to the show. Like 
people are just being influenced to just keep want to keep going and you know hopefully want to we want to influence them to follow their passion just like we're doing mm -hmm. like like how i like to think about it like it doesn't matter the size of the crowd you can have two like you can have two thousand people two hundred people or just two people yeah you get everybody the same show same good time mm -hmm. I think Mark Lindman said it best when he said, you "Bring energy to the people; the people bring it back, and that to me is fantastic. That is success." Indeed. Yeah. That was going to be my next question: Is when it comes to your live performances, what is the most important thing to you? Crowd interaction, for me, is the most important. Mm -hmm. Like, the one reason that I have a wireless when I play is I like to get off the stage. <clears throat> I like to move around. I like to interact with the crowd as if I were an audience member watching the band. Yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing that kind of makes it interesting, too, is I do like to go shirtless. For one, it is it is blazing hot. I mean, good Lord, the temperatures, I don't care if I get sunburned, okay? I'll peel away. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a big guy. It's not a big deal. But the fact that someone is willing to to go up there and be shirtless, but also interact with the people and get a bigger reaction from that is is definitely part of that. It's just selling a, it's selling a performance that goes along with the music. Yeah. And if you can take and if someone can go away from that and think, man, I need to go tell more people about this. I mean, that is definitely a big a big thing. Yeah. For for me, it's just being entertaining. Yeah. Like you, an an entertaining band, you know, not only has great sound, but you know, interacts with people and also is playing insanely well. You know, everything's got to come together. Entertainment value, and I'm gonna agree with Casey wholeheartedly. It's it's crowd, it's crowd interaction, and he's the only guy I know that'll. Now, not only, not only just play shirtless, but at the same time, he will power slide on his knees on concrete like the rebel that he is, <laughs> and people just eat it up. So, you know, that's that's what he's going for. That's what we're going for. We want people to come out of this not only inspired to follow their passion, but to, you know, have a good time and see that we're not just, you know, we're not just there to play. We're there to entertain and get along with everybody. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Oh man, real quick with what Mikey said. The first time that I power slid on a concrete floor, by the way, we're going to pack our stuff and everyone's like, Are your knees okay? And I'm like, What do you mean? And I look down and I'm like, Oh, they're bruised and bleeding. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna so say right that, on. I was gonna say that sounded painful. <laughs> there was not until the next day to be sure. <clears throat> I'm sure. <laughs> be a yeah. Yeah. Who are some of your dream collaborators? Like, who would you like to collaborate with on music, past or present? I I like to collaborate with Steve Vai. Yeah, he outplay me for sure, but it'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to collab with I don't know, Kerry King from Slayer. He happens to be one of my music idols, and I think it would just be cool between him and Jared from HeadBE. I think it would just be cool. It has a unique vocal style. Kerry King can shred on a guitar. I think it would just be fun to just throw it together and see what we could do. Yeah. I think, and you said that's uh, around today, right? Yeah, alive today, past or present, yeah. I think it'd be Justin Chancellor from Tool. I think that'd be a big one. I'd like to go and collab with him mm -hmm. because I like his style, and I'm sure he has a lot of, a lot of ideas that I wouldn't have even thought of to put forward. So mm -hmm. I would really like to collaborate with him and see what he can teach me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone? I guess. Yeah. There's really a lot of could be fun. And uh, have you guys encountered any obstacles or challenges when it comes to getting your music out there or heard by potential new fans? Oh, how long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you need. <laughs> Go for it, Logan. Yeah, it's, it's not you, Logan. Yeah, it's all, you've been awfully quiet over there, Shay. Yeah, I know. We, we've kind of done the majority of answering the questions. Let's like spread the wealth. Let's hear from the mask himself. Yeah, I shouldn't have mentioned that I knew he was a mask. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I keep forgetting. I think the biggest obstacle that we've had so far is just our reach on social media isn't quite 
what you would expect from bands um you know because like there's always the paid promotions on facebook or twitter or x or whatever it is or instagram and mm -hmm. and where we're all kind of working class stiffs here you know we can't really put forth all that money to pay and get it like really thrown out there so it's kind of just friends and word of mouth around here and maybe down into salt lake and over to boise but nothing to really like turn the tides and so i think our biggest obstacle is really that it's uh the reach that we have with social media both on our personal friends list and on our in our facebook group or on our facebook page mm -hmm. we just you know the word of mouth is kind of hindering yeah yeah um for a lot of for at least for me my number one goal is to write music and i tend to get really frustrated when i see like other like uh when i see people that just want to do other things other than what's important yeah. so yeah, yeah. so yeah. like if you're gonna like do music professionally you gotta at least make it a priority yeah i gotta say since stepping up to do vocals since our fallen brother those have been some really big shoes to fill. And it's like one of my biggest things is knowing, having the, trying to find the confidence to know that I'm not gonna let him down. He was a phenomenal, he was great on guitar. He was great on a microphone. And um, at the time when he was still around, he was vocalist and I was a rhythm guitarist. And now we brought in Nick and I took over the vocals it those are some really big shoes to fill and i'm like my biggest thing is i i want to make sure that we're doing our brother proud like not with just vocals i'm talking about as a collective unit that's mm -hmm. like every live show like i kind of have this ritual like at least 20 minutes before we go on stage i go find somewhere quiet and i kind of say a little prayer and I, nobody knows about this until now so i'm going to share it a airwaves but <laughs> and i'm sharing with my bandmates here but i always you know say a little prayer and i try and you know i let our boy know that the show's for him and we won't let him down and that's kind of one of my biggest things yeah that's really good everybody's gotta have those rituals but like to get them in the right headspace to perform yep. you gotta find that zen yeah yeah i've been on stage myself so i get that yeah, yeah. um so I, I mentioned earlier, guys, that you have your new EP out called The Kingdom of the Damned. Are you guys signed to any record labels? No. No. We actually funded that out of our home pockets. Did you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. We Everything that we've done has come out of pocket, and we have no commitments to any labels. We haven't even, we haven't even got that far, to be honest with you. But hmm. this means we are open to deals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We're, not, we're not we're not shutting down offers by any means. But... <laughs> and, and collectively, if everyone likes the songs, right. collectively, if we went day by day, that took before the mixing and mastering four days to record everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll pass on some um, information from my uh, not information, but some advice from uh, my last guest. Uh, Paul Crosby, who is uh, formerly of Saliva, uh, he had some advice for new musicians that are getting started out, and he said, stay independent as long as you can. That's what he told me, and uh, like I, I agree with okay. him. Yeah, so if you're going to sign with anybody, I'm not telling you guys what to do. I mean, what you guys do, you know, that that's your decision, but that was his advice, is stay independent as long as you can. So if that means signing to independent record labels as opposed to major record labels, yeah, that, that, at least that's that was his advice to new musicians. That's really good advice. Like, ever since we started w with everybody that was, you know, past, present, we were all on the same page. We are organic. We don't want to like sell our souls and, you know, jump right in that we kind of want to do things our own way. Mm -hmm. So if that means finding a record label down the road, so be it. But we kind of just want to do our own thing and come into things on our own terms. Yeah. We're 100% certified organic. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. These are fat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The only sellout part that I'd like to add is I'd like to I'd like to be I'd like to sell out every seat in the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's good. I like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Independent record labels would be the way to go. They offer you more freedom, like creative freedom, and writing your music and being yourselves. Whereas the major record labels are not so forgiving. And the independent record labels tend to work with you more on trying to get your content out there and uh, sounding better and better while still allowing you to sound like yourselves and giving you the freedom to be yourselves. So that would be my advice to you if you were to get a record label. That's that's really good advice because I've <clears> also <throat> heard old stories. Yeah. Like people working with the uh, major labels yeah. and just getting stiff. The independent music industry and the community in independent, independent music is a, a really warm and supportive place as well. I've had the opportunity, I've said it on the last show, um, to have Ecstasy Radio go commercial, and I've turned it down every single time. Even though that was my goal when I first started this radio show, was it to become a commercial radio station. Um, I've turned it down every single time. I just, I like the independent music industry in the community a hell of a lot more. You put on a hell of a radio show, I'll tell you that much. That's for sure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So guys, let's get back to the questions here. I've got a few more left for you. Uh, what are your plans for the rest of 2023? Do you have any touring going on? Do you guys plan on doing any music videos or releasing any new music or a new EP? We have had talks about wanting to do a music video. We haven't really put a whole lot of movement into it. But <clears throat> as far as the rest of 2023 we're kind of after this after september actually we're kind of wanting to take a little break from doing shows and focus more on getting more originals out there so we can hopefully shoot for a full album come january so we're we're kind of focused more on doing more writing and getting together and you know, we have we have a whole slew of you know different riffs, different drum beats, uh, a whole book of lyrics. It's just now we want to put it together. So when we go do our live shows, you're not hearing very many covers. You're hearing more of the Kingdom doing the Kingdom stuff. So that's mm -hmm. that's some of what we have planned. Just a book of lyrics. I thought you had a whole library, my boy. Oh, everybody! <laughs> Collectively, it is a rolodex of freaking songs, man. It's it's. If we tried to like label how much we all have to contribute, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We fulfill yeah. some albums. Uh -huh. That's awesome, guys. And uh, what is? And don't you dare say the the advice that I just gave you, unless it's true. What is the best advice that you've ever received and could offer other musicians? Uh, don't ever give up on your dreams, whatever they are. If you wanna, you know be in a cover band and play in bars and you want to make money that way go for it you know learn the material that you want to play and play it for people if you want to write your own don't be afraid to just show the world that this is who i am whether lyrically or musically don't ever give up on your dreams man don't ever lose sight of that mm -hmm. um i can tell you back when we were starting and we were Picking some covers because you know bar scene and all that stuff. We were learning some songs to play there. Somebody had pitched the idea of wanting to learn uh, "Six by All That Remains," and I was talking to our fallen brother newbie, and I said, "I can't do that, man. That's way too fast. That's far out of my league." And he said, "Logan, I don't ever want to hear you say those words again. You are a doer. You don't ever say that." Mm -hmm. So. Mom I didn't raise no wuss. Right. <laughs> so my advice is don't ever give up on your dreams. Just follow them. Follow them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add on to Logan because I'm going to add on what uh, Logan's saying, um, specifically as it relates, relates to guitar players. As many guitar players are watching because I used to teach guitar. And uh, when you're teaching people stuff like, say, your scales, your chords, cadences, whatever. Mm -hmm. then the inevitable question comes up of how am I going to use this to write music? And I will tell them that what you have to remember is that there's no theory of music without the music first. Mm -hmm. Music should always be your goal when you pick up an instrument or when you're singing. Mm -hmm. It's whether it's to play the songs that you love or whether it's to write brand new stuff that's never existed before. That should be the goal. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the other one I'm going to say is the one is advice that general advice that my dad gave me was no matter what you're doing, 110 percent, 
Mm -hmm. So if you're playing, put it all into playing. If you're doing music, put it all into music. If you're working, put it all into work. Yep. Yep. I follow my dad's advice too. He'd always tell me, don't start something you can't finish. And at the time he was meaning school fights <laughs> because I was a little kid <laughs> in middle school getting in a lot of fist fights. But after after his passion with music and seeing how he plays, you know, that that doesn't just pertain to fist fights or anything like that. That <clears throat> pertains to everything that you set your mind to. So, you know, when it comes to making music, don't start what you can't finish, man. Go give it your all. Put 110% in there and, you know, don't quit until you're satisfied with it. Yeah. I mean, don't be afraid to try new things. Like 11 years ago, I went to see a, lo a local show and I didn't really do anything music-wise. Mm -hmm. And the guitarist was going back and forth between playing guitar and playing bass. And I walked right up to him and I said, hey, do you need a player? I don't know that much about playing bass, but I can learn. And that started an 11 plus the year relationship with me playing bass. And so it was just all out of trying something new and, you know, going up and talking to people, especially. Yeah, very nice. and, and when you're playing too, like uh, I'll tell a lot of people, cause they'll get like, especially when you see a band when they get really nervous on playing. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell them, it's like, like I, like what Mikey was saying, he's got this ritual that he does to get himself in the right headspace. What you have to do is really like access that entertaining side of you, whether that's through creating a character like Slipknot, Alice Cooper, or Buckethead did, or whether that's just entering that right space of mind. And you got to find that. And then that's what you wear on your sleeves when you're out on the, yeah. on the stage. Yeah. <clears throat> is there anything that you guys would like to tell your fans that might be listening out there? We appreciate you guys very much for the support that you've given us and in the future. And we love all of you. Thank you for checking us out. Whether you do it, <clears throat> whether you've seen our videos online, whether you've bought in this, whether you've purchased the CD, whether you've checked us out on streaming platforms, or even voted for us in this competition that we're in. Thank you so very much for the very like the overwhelming, just the just the love, man. It's just we we love it. We love all of you, and we can't wait to put out new material for you guys very soon. I don't know if it's thing that you just said but like even even sharing the music to one or two people that you know mm -hmm. it helps a lot yeah. i'm gonna add to what casey said there <laughs> i i know who you are fan out there that's just lurking and listening to our stuff why don't you just hit follow in addition to listening <laughs> <laughs> there will come a time you know when when we start exploring outside of this little area that we're in and we would love to have you at a show we we would we're For looking sure. at hitting the road um, sometime this next year. Maybe that would be sweet. It just kind of depends on how the cards fall into place. But, you know, we we would just love to have you. Come check us out. Give us a listen. If you're not sure about us, check us out on streaming platforms. Check us out a live show. Just, you know, we just want to be heard. And we also want to encourage. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Uh, I really do appreciate it. You guys are an incredible band. I've been looking forward to having you on here for quite a while now. So, uh, and you guys are always welcome back. Always welcome back. I always say, I don't want this to be like a one-time deal where you guys come on once and I never hear from you guys again. You guys are always welcome back on the show. And thank you so much for being here. You will be one of the first people that we contact when we get our album out. There yeah, for sure. I'll put it out there for you. We're, we're excited to be a part of your program. Oh, yeah, that's like, great. Thank you so much for your time and let, like letting us be a part of it, man. That was cool. No problem, man. Oh, yeah. No problem. And I also want to congratulate you guys on your new EP. And I urge everybody that's listening to this radio show to go out and check it out. Guys, where can they, where can they find you? You can find us on all streaming services. So no matter if you're using Spotify, uh, YouTube Music, Pandora, whatever, you mm -hmm. can find us on there. We also have our... Facebook, uh, there's a group and page. Yeah, there's just both it. And um, one of our managers actually put up uh, our website, mm -hmm. and I can't remember the URL on it. Kingdom LLC. Okay, so it's right there. Awesome. We're also on YouTube too. Yes. Awesome. Well, guys, again, thank if you. They, so... oh, go ahead. Sorry. If they look us up, 
we're not we the kingdom. You have to kind of search a little bit <laughs> because I've ran into that problem before. <laughs> Sorry to like cut you off. I just know that that's going to be a little bit of confusion later you're gonna, on. You're going to start finding things about religious, and we're kind of on the other end of that spectrum as far as what you're looking for. So just be careful what you're hunting down when you look at the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> No, you guys are incredible. You guys are incredible. Sorry, what was that? Oh, if you uh, if you search on on our website, kingdom LLC, you'll actually find all of our links there. So, yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool, guys. Thank you so much again for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. But unfortunately, I do have to end the interview now. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. No problem. No problem. And that was my good friends from the kingdom, guys. You are always welcome back on the show. Always, 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 always. And I hope you guys do come back. So let's keep the rock rolling here, guys. I've got Chroma next with Kill the Friction. I'll see you guys back in a bit. I'm your host, DJ Doc, here on Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show.
And that was Take Me Home by As Tides Rise. Before that, that was our good friends Alessa with their song Unburdened. What I've got up next for you is Born Lost with their song The Cheerful. You are listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. <laughs> Hey, this is Paul Crosby from Cold Words, and you're listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. You're driving force for putting a finger down your throat, a pattern from your death. 
Still waiting for the kiss to heal 
And that was Falling from Grace with Shadow. Before that, there was Miss Vane with Song of Solitude. What I've got up next for you is my good friend Tim Steinruck with his band The Mighty One and their song Master of Reality. I'll see you guys back here in a bit. You are listening to Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. One, two, three, four! I'm Doc, and I'm the host of Ecstasy Radio, your number one free rock and metal radio show. Guys, unfortunately, I do have to end the show now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. But you guys know me. I'm not one to leave you empty-handed. I've got Damnation Plan last with their song Dream Dead. I'll see you guys back here again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel as always, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. So I'll see you then. Have a great weekend, a great and safe weekend, and keep the rock rolling.